In today's tutorial, we're going to escape to the Hamptons with this Hamptons crochet beach bag. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're going to work on the Hamptons crochet beach bag. This is using Bernat Handicrafter crochet thread. This is a really interesting pattern and you may have prejudged this photo but I want to tell you how to achieve this look is actually so simple it's not even funny even I almost missed a gem. First of all, let's look at the photograph and then we'll talk about the pattern in more detail. This bag is not very complicated at all. Do you see that there is like these large stripes that kind of go down and they're kind of just sweeping down and you're thinking to yourself, how did they do that? That is the yarn doing the work, no kidding. So what's happening here is that there's three rows of single crochet and then there is double trebles and double trebles are what is creating these beautiful blocks of white that happen. So let me show you my example that is currently in process or we've already started filming but this is what it will look like. So when you see it here, this is called seashore this particular color. So when we do these drop downs of double crochet you're going to see that because you're extending so far down that the whole line becomes a certain color and therefore you end up with these beautiful color lines that you see. So you see three layers of single crochet and then a double treble and then three more layers. And what's going to happen in this particular pattern is that it grows so quick because these double trebles here create such a beautiful distance that when it goes into the project you can actually advance on your project quite quickly and here's what it looks like here at the top. So this is one of those really cool projects and uh, we're gonna start right back from the very beginning and let's begin. So what are you gonna need in order to play today? So you're gonna need a couple things to play today. You're going to need a 3.25 or a size D crochet hook today for the crochet thread. This is Bernat Handicrafter. You're gonna need a total of three of these balls in order to work it and it really is becoming quite easy. So we're gonna be making a main piece which is this section and then we're gonna be making two handles that come up and what's gonna happen here at the top is that it feeds through the work and then we just tie a knot and so then it becomes very quick and easy. I have to say this bag took a lot quicker than I expected it to and I think it'll be quite a nice project and uh, because it is crochet thread it's going to last you a very long time because this yarn is so strong that you can't even break it with your own hands if you try to pull on it. So let's uh, begin right back from the very beginning and we're going to start at the bottom of the bag and work our way up. So let's begin on the beginning chain and what's gonna happen is that we're gonna come across the bottom of the bag with the chain and it says to chain 79 and then we're gonna work our way across the chain and then we're gonna turn around and come across that same chain on the other side. So what happens is that the beginning chain is actually the center piece of the very bottom of the bag. And so we're gonna wrap around a few times and then start the double treble. So you can change the size of this bag very easily by just changing the length of your starting chain of when you began. So let's uh, begin and let's start that concept. So let's start off with the slip knot today and we're going I'm going to show you a smaller version of this bag and when I mean smaller just a small example because I've already actually done this bag and I can show you how to do it in a smaller example in order to make it work. So what's going to happen here in the chain is that we're going to come across the bottom of the chain and the bottom of the bag is right here. And what's gonna happen is that we're gonna chain all the way across to chain 79 and then we're gonna come back and single crochet but when we get to the other side we're gonna turn around and go on the bottom side of the chain and what's gonna happen is that we're gonna create what is like a hat kind of idea and you'll see at the bottom that we start turning circles and going all the way around. So the first chain that we're going to start with is gonna establish that and then the rest of the project becomes really quite easy. So I'm gonna show you a smaller example of how to do this bag and then I'm gonna bring you back and we'll bring this bag back as we finish it up near the top. So let's begin and so if you're doing this project you're going to chain 79. Myself I'm just gonna do uh, 11. So 1, 2, 3, 4, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. So go all the way to seventy-nine for me. I'm gonna stop here because I can show you how to do this project just in a smaller example. So let's uh, come back in just a moment. Once you have your seventy-nine done and I only have my eleven here, you're gonna go second chain from the hook and you wanna go into the back loop only. So just a second chain so count it back. So one and two and insert and get the back loop only so it's just one strand on the, the, the crochet hook and just single crochet. 
and you're gonna wanna do that all the way down the line only grabbing the back loop only. So what's gonna happen is that once I get to the other side of here we're gonna turn it around and we're gonna crochet along the bottom side of this current chain so that we create a full revolution going all the way around. So what I want you to do and you're gonna notice that the, this will get all curly and kinda wanna get in your way. Just have some patience with it because it takes a few uh, revolutions of doing this for that curl to kinda not uh, happen. So it's just a matter of just working with it and it's really not a big deal. Uh, for camera reasons and tutorial absolutely it's a big deal because it gets in your way when I teach but you just wanna crochet yourself all the way down the line. So please do that now and I'll see you at the end and I'll show you how to turn around and go on the other side. Once you get all the way down to the end of your chain the last chain it's telling us to put three single crochets into that same one. So in the back loop only continue on that last chain to put three single crochets. So one and two and three. So that's allowing you to turn around and then do in the other side. So what you wanna do then is turn the chain over. See how it kinda just naturally wanted to turn it over? So you're gonna start on the very first one and this time there will be two strings on top because you were only going on one string before and you're going to crochet, single crochet all the way down the chain but on the bottom side. And I want you to put this straggler down on top of it and trap that into position so you don't have to worry about that later and I want you to single crochet yourself all down on the underside of this chain. Okay, so it's just one single crochet into each. So you'll wanna trap that straggler in about two inches and then you can just let it hang out and just trim it off at that point because you can trust that it's pretty much buried into your work at that point. So I'm gonna let mine fall out now and I'm gonna continue and I'm just gonna continue down and so when you get to the other side of this chain you're going to want to put in two single crochets right at the very end of the chain and not three like you had done before because the first chain that you started with counts as one of them. Okay, so in the very last one I just want you to put two single crochets in there. So one and two and I want you to join it with the top of the first single crochet. So see how I'm kinda turning it around and I want you to just join it to the top of the very first single crochet and that concludes that round. Okay, so your version will be a lot bigger and that's how you go around the bottom. So when you have the sample, so you're gonna go down and then around and then you'll be having this idea on the ends of the bottom that you'll be going all the way around. Let's move along to round number two, three and four. So let's move on to rounds two, three and four. So three rounds. So we've established now that we've gone all the way around. So now when we go to crochet we're gonna just follow it around, turn around and come back the other side. So let's begin to do this. So this is round number two. So we're gonna chain up one to start and one single crochet in that first one and you're just gonna move along your chain or sorry um, along your row and just continue to go all the way down and then when you get to the other side you just continue to follow it around and it's just like a top of a hat. You'll eventually end up back to where you are. What I did notice with myself is sometimes it's hard to tell where you started so you can mark that starting stitch with a stitch marker if you prefer. This yarn is not always lending itself to, uh, because it's so thin to always clearly identify when you stop and start around. Of course if you're experienced it probably would not have an issue with that. So I'm coming down to the end so I'm just uh, crocheting around and just following it and the project's naturally turning in my hand and I get one single crochet into each single crochet and this is round number two. So I'm watching where I'm putting my stitches. Should finish that stitch first and I'm looking. And getting started I think is the hardest part of this whole project uh, because once you get enough material in your hand to be able to hold it, it gets faster and that's just being very blunt and honest with you. So I'm just moving down the line till I get to the very last one and this is row number two. Okay, the next one is my last one and then I'm going to, sorry I got one more. Um, so I'm going to join it with the top of the beginning one that I had started with. There you go. Okay. So that was round number two. So round number 
three we have to start. So we're gonna just turn our work now so we don't continue to go round and around. We just turn our work and we go back into the same one and come back all the way around. You will notice in this bag is that when you look at each one of these single crochets they, they do have the appearance of being turned at the end. So it gives you a more of a, a depth look at it. So in round number three we're going to turn our work. So we were here gonna turn our work chain one and then single crochet into the same one and go all the way around back the other way. So why would they have you do that? And I can tell you why they've done that. So I'm not gonna leave you to guess. So the reason why they've had you turn is that in, if you go continuously around and around and around and keep slip stitching, you ever notice on top of the hats that the slip stitch becomes up on an angle? Well by turning the work like this you prevent that from happening so the um, the slip stitch will always be at the side of the bag and not going out through the middle of the bag. So it keeps all of that towards the outside of your bag and then you could just uh, you'll have a very nice appearance and if you are gonna go to the Hamptons you're gonna want to have something really nice and nothing with a slip stitch down through the middle of the bag. So I'm just continuing to go all the way down and then back around. This is round number three. And you're gonna notice it's gonna start bowling up like it's a hat. And that's because we're not expanding any of our stitches. That's the great thing about this bag. Once we get the bottom established, it is the length of the bag it's gonna be and uh, it's gonna start bowling up on you. So we're gonna go all the way down to the end. We just got one more to go. And then I'm going to slip stitch it to the beginning. There you go. So that was round number three. So let's turn our work. So we turn our work once again and go for round number four. So we get rounds number two, three and four done and then we start doing that nice lengthy work. So we chain one and I've just, I've already turned it. So it's one single crochet into each going all the way around. So if you ever wanted to make a little mini cell phone pouch to go with your big uh, beach bag, this would be the way to do it. You just gotta chain the right amount going across. So it's just one single crochet. I'm starting to speed up a bit and uh, that's a good thing. I think one of the, the hardest things about this bag is just making sure that you understand the pattern but and then once you get more work in your hand as far as holding it, it becomes a lot easier. So I'm just moving my way all the way down and this thread yarn is fabulous to work with. It glides on the hook perfectly and I'm about to conclude round number four. So I'm gonna attach it so I'm just gonna join it with the slip stitch to conclude off round number four and now we're ready for double trebles. So here's what it looks like so far. Yours will obviously be a lot bigger and now we're gonna show you how to do double trebles. So now we're gonna do a double treble for round number five and then we're gonna do three layers of single crochet and then return back to du double uh, trebles. So that's the repeat pattern for this whole thing until we get to close to the top of the handles. So we're gonna turn our work from where we were and we're going to chain five. That counts as a double treble. Okay, so just get the yarn back into your hand and let's chain five. So one, two, three, four and five and coming into the next stitch so that counts as the first one. So we're gonna wrap the hook and we're gonna wrap the hook three times. Okay, that's a double treble. So treble is wrapping twice, double treble is wrapping three times. Go into your next stitch right in, pull through, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two, and then pull through the final two and that's a double treble. So let's wrap again three times and going into the next stitch that is available to you and just double treble yourself back to the top. So just pulling through two each time and then going into the next, oh wrap three times, go into the next stitched stitch. So because these double trebles are so long it creates the illusion that color is appearing just like it shows in the bag with it will block the colors perfectly. So for example you have one clearly white one, you have a blue with a mix, you have a blue, you have a blue with the brown mix and then completely brown and it does that automatically because the yarn is variegated. 
And so you wanna continue to move around and I'm not gonna go all the way around with you on this one because it's all the same. So each stitch is going to be a double treble and when we come back here I will show you what to do and we'll just review three more rounds of single crochet and then um, we'll have you um, get all the way done and then we'll get to the top of the bag and then we'll review on how to make the handles. And that's what it looks like so far. So I'm coming up all the way around. I'm actually done the round. I just have to join it to the top of the beginning. So you gotta make sure that when you start this that you don't accidentally go too far. So I'm just gonna put my hands behind it so you can see it. So this first one, the double treble, see how it's leaning into this one here? Now and the other one is into the stitch right behind it so that means that you're done. Sometimes people think that this uh, stitch that's leaning over is actually an empty stitch but it's not. So once you get all the way around just join it to the top of the first chain five with a slip stitch like so and just pull everything tight. So this is what it looks like so far. You're gonna see that it's nice and open so this is a mini version of your bag. You turn your work and let's continue along and we're going to do three rounds now of single crochet. So we're gonna chain up one and then in the top of that first one we want to put a single crochet and we want to go all the way around on the tops of these double trebles with single crochet and then when we get back we're gonna slip stitch and then do two more rounds exactly the same thing. Again making sure that you're turning in between each one of these rows in order to do it. Okay so I'll see you back here in just a moment. So I'm coming up all the way back around and this is the one here. Do you see how it's extending over this white one? People think that's a stitch and it's not. So you gotta make sure that you do not go into that one and just go right into the top of the first single crochet. And you get comfortable with that in the rules of crochet. I've also turned the project so that I can see the outside. So what I like to do is that I like to go along the outside of the project and around and not kinda crossing over and coming back the other way. So I just kinda turn it inside out as I go. So let's move along and we're gonna do another layer. So we're gonna just chain up one, one single crochet into the very first stitch and then one single crochet into each one of the stitches going all the way around. So each one of there and I'll see you back here in just a moment. So this is round number two of doing single crochet and we're gonna do it one more time and then we're gonna back to double treble and then we're going to uh, have you do that and I'm gonna take you to the top of the bag where we're going to continue the bag that I have been making off camera and I'm gonna show you how to do the handle work at that point. So continue to single crochet all the way around. So I'm coming into my very last stitch again. See this one how it's kinda leaning over into it. People think that's a stitch. It's not. So just look for that and just slip stitch to the beginning like so. So now I'm going to turn my work again let me turn it first and then flip it inside out and then chain one, one single crochet into the same one. That turning of inside out is just my own personal and then you're just gonna do one single crochet all the way around. So this is, uh, will count as your third single crochet round and then we're gonna go back to double trebles. So there's gonna be three single crochet rounds between each of the double treble rounds. So I'll see you back here in just a moment. When you get all the way back around one single crochet into the final and then just join it to the top of the beginning. Okay so here's what it looks like so far. So we have our double trebles that are in here. We have our three layers here and now we're ready for a double treble. So let's turn our work and where am I here? So let's turn our work and I'm gonna flip it. And now we're ready for double trebles. So if you remember it is chaining five to begin. So one, two, three, four and five and then each stitch gets a double treble. So wrap that hook three times and you're going into each stitch and you're gonna notice that these double trebles really speed your project up as far as like the length of the bag. And they provide a really cool look uh, when you're uh, gonna be using the bag as well. So wrapping that hook three times continue to double treble all the way around. Coming up all the way around I'm double trebling right to the end and then I'm going to just join it with a uh, slip stitch then to the top of the first chain five. So just right up at the top just kind of open it up. Okay don't be scared you can pull on it. It's crochet thread and just slip stitch it to the top and then you're ready again for three more rounds 
of single crochet. So you're gonna continue this idea going up all the way in your bag and the bag will continue to grow and here's what I did off camera. So I have yet to finish it. Uh, and so what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna have you uh, get to a certain size and then I'm gonna meet you back at the top of this bag where we're gonna then work on the re remainder of it where we're gonna uh, make the holes in order for the handles. So what uh, dimensions are you gonna need? Let's cover that next. So the dimensions that you're going to need is a total of 14 inches from the bottom of the bag all the way to the lip of the top. Okay, and we're gonna finish with the double trebles as being the ending before we start the top of the bag for doing the spaces for the handles. So what I need you to do is continue to do your pattern until you get to this to be 14 inches and it's again exactly what you've seen here before and it's just a matter of carrying up and when we come back then I'm going to show you how to continue with this bag in order to finish it at the very top. So I'll see you then and uh, good luck and this will probably take you a few hours in order to do um, but it is really an amazing bag when it's all said and done. So I'll see you back here in just a moment as we start the top area for doing the handles on this official bag. So I'm now back at the 14 inch mark and this is where I am and I've just finish, finished my double trebles. For tutorial reasons I actually fastened off my yarn completely. You do not need to do that. I just did it because I wanted to do the handles before I went to the next part to make sure that I understood it. So it's more for myself than anything. So I'm just gonna slip it back to um, where it was and I did fasten off and I did weave in my ends. And once you get the double trebles it's just like before you're gonna turn the work and then go back in the other direction. So what I need you to do for the next five rounds I need you to go uh, around as single crochet then turn your work and then uh, chain up one single crochet and I need you to do five rounds of just straight single crochets back and forth on this before we continue along and then what we're gonna do then is then we're gonna make space for then the handles to slide into after that. So please do five rounds of single crochet going all the way around this bag and we'll see you back here in just a moment. And welcome back. I've got my five rows now complete and now we're ready to establish the handle. Now you'll notice that the handle is a, a nice chunky piece of yarn. We've already covered, we're gonna be covering that uh, later on in the tutorial on how to make that. But what's gonna happen in this is that we're gonna feed it through a hole and then we're gonna tie it and it's the knot that's gonna not prevent it from falling out. But you know what, I'm kind of paranoid a little bit. I would probably throw in a stitch or two because chances are when I'm skipping down the beach all happy that I'm you know doing my thing on the beach. I'd probably, <laughs> I'd be worried about it falling out. So I'd probably throw in a couple stitches anyway because that's just the kind of crocheter that I am. So what we want to do in this round here we're gonna move along is that we need to create a little bit of holes. The holes will be nice and tight so that we're gonna have to feed this uh, particular handle through and then after we feed it through once we get this whole section done of course then we're gonna tie our knot and you're good to go. So in this part of the tutorial we're gonna be moving up in the pattern and uh, we have just only four more rounds left and I think it's gonna be quite exciting. So let's uh, cover that next. So in this part of the tutorial what we can do you can either follow the instructions that says chain one and then one single crochet in the next six or 15 single crochets and then we create the hole for the gap. I know myself. I know I could have dropped a stitch or added a stitch along the way and I know if I follow this I might actually have handles that are not centered in this bag. So what I did is that I folded the bag directly in half and I'm on the seam line here and I noticed that it said to, uh, to single crochet in the first 15. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna count from the edge of the bag over 15. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. So I'm going to go there and in that one it says to skip over three so I'm gonna go over one more. Uh, sorry I'm gonna go over two more and I'm going over two more because I'm gonna create the space. So this is gonna be the very center of this, this handle on this side and I'm just gonna put a stitch marker there. This is a really big thick yarn. Um, I'm just gonna put it through there so I know exactly where I wanna go. So of the three uh, stitches that we're gonna skip this is the middle one of the three. So what I wanna do is that I wanna go back to the center, uh, the side again Okay, and now I'm going to count back on the other side of, 50, of 15. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15 and then I'm gonna count two more over. So right here and I'm gonna fold this in half and make sure that this lines up together and it does. 
so that I know that when I come all the way around on this bag is that if I skip over this one as being the center one of the three I know that both sides are going to be completely equal. So what could happen on here if you've lost count in any way and it says to single crochet so many stitches in a row if you're off what's gonna happen is that these handles will not be lined up with each other. So coming back to the other side I'm gonna do the exact same thing from the edge. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 and then just go two more. So really you can go uh, 17 and I'm gonna put this stitch marker on here. Sometimes you gotta just, you just have to know yourself. I've done bags where I put on the handles and they're not even centered and I was like screaming. So okay, so I'm gonna go back to the side again. So I'm gonna go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 and then I'm gonna go two more and stick my hook in there and I'm gonna put another stitch marker in. And so now the stitch markers are in. So I'm going to hold this up in just a moment and I wanna make sure that the stitch markers are gonna line up with each other as they go. Okay? So if there, if there's any a problem right now, now is gonna be the time to see it. You will see that it's not centered on the sides and it's not centered in the middle on both sides. So now we're, what we're gonna do is that we're going to start up the next round and we're gonna start this round here. Remember we have to turn as we go and what we need to do then is that we need to single crochet ourselves all the way to the stitch marker. So we're gonna uh, stop the one before the stitch marker and then we're gonna skip over three and then we're gonna come down. So we're gonna skip one after the stitch marker and then come down on the next and that will create the mini hole that we need. So let's just, just chain up one. So you can either count it over if you would prefer that if but if you're a lot like me and you just wanna improvise you can go ahead and do so. So I'm just gonna single crochet myself over to the first section. I've done enough bags with my, with myself is that sometimes these handles are what kill you in the end with these bags is that you're just off by one or two stitches and it is amazing how much it can bother you as a crocheter. <laughs> Uh, I'm not gonna deny that on how much it will, uh, how much it could bother you. So sometimes you just gotta think about the system that works for you. So I'm looking where the stitch marker is. So I'm gonna just stop two before the stitch marker. So this one is empty, stitch marker and then that one's empty. So what I have to do at this particular point is that we have to um, chain three, one, two and three skip over three so it's the one before the stitch marker, the one of the stitch marker and the one after and come down on the other side and then continue to single crochet yourself all the way around. So when you get to the next stitch marker the same thing. You're gonna stop the one before, you're gonna chain your three and then come down the one after. Okay so you'll have one before that's empty, the stitch marker, one after that's empty and then you'll come down before. I want you to do that same idea going all the way around and I'll meet you back here in just a moment. So I've come up all the way around now and right where the stitch markers were I did my chaining of three over top of them. So you end up with these little holes and these are what the, the, the band is gonna go through. So let's turn our work. So we're gonna do this round here. So this round is very simple. It's just uh, we only have three rounds left by the way. So this is one of them. We're gonna single crochet into each of the stitches all the way around. In the chain threes that you left I need you to put in three single crochets into that to bring it back to normal for this round. So we're gonna come up to the stitch marker. You can pull those out if you want to. Just make sure that you keep an eye on where the chain three spaces are. Okay and continuing around and here it is. Okay, so there's the space. So I'm gonna go into the stitch before it. So in the space we're gonna put three single crochets in and that'll bring it back in balance and it'll also stabilize that hole to be nicer too. And then we're gonna come on the other side and continue to uh, single crochet. So please single crochet all the way around and making sure that you put three single crochets into those um, chain three spaces and I'll see you back here in just a moment and then we'll have two rounds left. 
I'm all the way back around and now I'm gonna turn around my work and now the next two rows are what you already know and you were just gonna chain up one and begin and single crochet into each stitch going all the way around. So this is uh, how you're gonna do this. So I'm going to leave that with you. So get these last two rounds done and I want you to fasten off and weave in your ends and then we're gonna move along to the handles next. And so when you're done this particular point here you're going to see the holes are like right here and so you'll have two rows up so it's almost like it's in the middle of this band kind of section. So please get that done and meet me back here. We'll review doing the handles and then we'll review on how to put the handles into position and I'll see you in just a moment. So I'm coming up all the way around and this is my last stitch and I'm ready to do the handles next. I wanna show you how I'm going to fasten this off so I'm just gonna join it with the slip stitch to the first one and this is how I'm going to do it and I'm just gonna cut a string maybe about 8-12 inches long and I wanna pull this through. Okay, so I'm gonna tighten it down onto it. So this yarn is kind of thin in the sense that you can't just go back and forth with a hook because then it will, um, it just will not hide in really well. So you wanna put it in a darning needle and all you're just gonna do is just go in the direction from which you came and just glide it underneath into the fiber work itself. Okay, don't try to go in gaps. Just try to ram that needle right through some, to an actual project, uh, in actual fibers. Just taking my time here. Just get it in right in between. And you wanna go back and forth three times. So go one, going in a different path but in this other direction going back for two and then I go back in the other direction one more time in a different path but in the other direction. And what I mean by other path, if you follow the exact same route that you just did for the fibers, it'll just pull out what's existing. So if you go in a slightly different starting point, um, it'll go back through. So now you can safely cut that down right to the project and you don't have to worry about that string ever falling out. So I'm going to move ahead now to the handles. I'm gonna show you how to do it but this is my beach bag. So far I'm looking pretty good and I'm gonna leave in my stitch markers and then we're gonna cover the handle next and you can see this is where the holes are and I'm going to show you how to put those in once we get the handles done. So I'll see you back here in just a moment. So now let's review doing the handles. So our goal is to get this but we end up looking like this. Okay, so I'm gonna be showing you some techniques today and what we're gonna do is that we're gonna create two panels that are flat out just like this and we're gonna be chaining 131. What I recommend is in the instructions it says to uh, do two of these and what I recommend is doing both of them without doing the sewing in order to create the, the look that you see here. And, and the reason for it is that I like to make sure that you do get your counts correct and that you get the number of rows correct. It's very easy to get distracted. So what I did for myself is that I made two of these and then I'm going to put them together. So let me show you how uh, to do one of these and then I'll show you how to put them together. So I'm gonna do a small example with you now on camera and this will not be the whole uh, handle because it's really quite straightforward. It's just single crochets back and forth. So it says to chain 131 so you're gonna do that. So I'm just gonna do a small example of chaining 10. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. So you're going to go to 131 and then second chain from the hook you're going to just get the back loop only and by doing the back loop only it creates a nicer look. So you're just gonna single crochet yourself right back across the chain on the back loop only all the way down. This is not like the bottom of the bag where we turned it to go around the other side. We're just gonna go straight back and forth on this row for the amount of rows that we need to do. So we're gonna review how many rows you need to do in just a moment but we're just going to single crochet ourselves. That was not a single crochet. I didn't finish that last one. So I'm just single crocheting and again getting started with the thread yarn is harder um, because of the fact is that there's less to hang on to but once you can get more into your hand to hold your work as you crochet these definitely get a lot faster like totally faster. So we're going to just uh, continue to single crochet yourself all the way down the row until you run out of stitches. And then I'm going into the end right there. So now what we're going to do is just simply 
single crochet. So we're gonna turn our work and just chain up one, one single crochet in the first one and then one single crochet into each of them all the way around. Noticing that I'm capturing that straggler down in position so it gets stuck underneath. It's kind of a fluke it just ended up there so I just wanna make sure that gets stuck underneath so you don't have any of these uh, um, stragglers hanging out and if you do you just get a darn needle and hide them in. So you're gonna go back and forth uh, for so many rows. So rows number, so this is the, the row number two. So you're gonna go to all the way to row number 14 just back and forth just single crocheting all the way down and back and you're gonna see that with the variegated yarn it's gonna have a really quite a beautiful look. So once you get to the end of row number 14 I would fasten off completely and then do your second handle and then come back and then do the folding over in order to create the handle as you go. Okay so just go back and forth to turn your work, chain up one, one single crochet into each and then you'll end up with one of these. Now you're gonna notice as well is that the starting one has a little bit looser here than it does on the one that I ended. That's not gonna be a problem because you're, you're gonna see it here you don't even notice it. So everything is gonna stabilize itself as you put everything together. So let me show you how to put these together uh, once you are ready for that process. So we're now ready in this video to put this together. You're gonna notice it's like a tube and we're going to single crochet ourselves down the, the one side and we're gonna trap the other side at the same time. So we're just gonna create a slip knot to begin. To grab your work, okay, and just fold it in half. So it's gonna fold in half all the way down the lengthwise. You, you know you can try to fold this right now but it's not gonna stay so why bother. So you're going to just insert into the first stitch on the one side and then insert into the same stitch on the other side. And we're going to yarn over and slip stitch it to hold it. We're going to chain one and going into the same stitch so it's going through the front one and through the back one we're going to single crochet. Capt capture that uh, straggler down in. So advance one more stitch on the front side and if you're pinching everything together when you go to insert your, your hook through you're gonna automatically catch, her, catch that second one in the other side so that they're catching it together. Okay and you're going to single crochet yourself down the line. So just advance one. So once you get the swing of this you can literally just slide your hook across and both of them will capture in at the same time. Of course keep an eye on it make sure nothing else goes in there that shouldn't be. And because you're matching the stitches uh, straight back on both sides you can physically just work your way down and your uh, handle should stay in alignment. The only time it would not is if you may have dropped a stitch or two or added a stitch or two along the path therefore there's not the equal amount of stitches at the end. And if it is, if there isn't an equal thing you, and you're off by a few you can actually fake it pretty good just to be creative with your crochet hook in order to do so. So just go all the way down single crocheting your handle together to create the, the tube shape that you're going to need and then we're gonna be able to assemble this onto the bag next. So do this with both of your handles. So I'm coming up near the end of the handle and I'm still continuing to match as I go and I happen to get um, them pretty good. The last one I was off by one stitch but all I just do, if I'm off by one stitch, uh, all I just do is just kind of force it to fit and it will fit and because we're tying this into a knot anyway uh, at the base it's really not gonna be that noticeable. So you're gonna always notice that the side that you finish on is always tighter than the side that you begin on and it's just typical with the afghan work as well. So I'm just single crocheting myself right to the end and I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna fasten off. So I'm just gonna cut the string probably about eight inches or tw up, up to twelve and I'm just gonna pull through that loop if I didn't drop it first just gonna pull through the loop and what I wanna do is that I wanna put this onto a darning needle and I wanna feed it through. You know you're gonna go through the extra work of, of doing this extra bag or like fabulous bag anyway so you might as well finish it off right. So I'm just gonna slide it underneath the stitches. Okay go about an inch or, or so just right underneath. You just wanna stay right in the middle of it and go back and forth three times. So it was one and I just kinda give it a bit of slack. It is thread so it's gonna be tight and then coming back in the other direction for two. It's right in the middle of the project. It's not poking out the other side. Um, I can feel it on the other side if it was. So and then back in for a third time. 
So I do this on uh, fastening off my stuff. So then I can just simply trim it right down to the project. And therefore you'll never see the loose end. So both of your uh, handles should be completely done at this point. And we're gonna go back to the bag and we're gonna do the assembly. So this is what they both look like. And it, they've come a long way compared to what they did look like uh, when they were completely flat. So this is a, gonna be a substantial handle to hold on, hold on to. And let's go back to the project and begin the assembly. So we're now ready to assemble our handles into our bag. So I thought to myself, you know, I might have to throw in some extra stitches. I really don't think the knot, if once I tie this into a knot, it's gonna fall out. So I wanna go in the inside of the bag and I wanna just grab one strand and I'm gonna do it so that the side that I did the single crochet to join them is down. Okay, so that the upper side is the where it's rounded. Okay, so if you look at it from this perspective, you see this is where I joined it. So I wanna face that down and down and meaning in towards the center of the bag. And I wanna feed this through the hole. It's gonna be a little bit of a tight fit but not uncomfortable tight. And I want to pull enough up here so that I can form a knot with this. And so I'm just gonna try to do that here. And I'm just gonna use the material, get that needle or uh, yarn strand out of the way. And I wanna form a knot with this. But I don't want a lot of this left out hanging. So I'm going to just pull on it. And just before you tie the, uh, pull the knot, make sure the knot looks decent. So to make sure it's kind of flat looking. So just kind of adjust it a bit and then pull. And there you go. Okay, so then I can pull up on it and that will never fall out of that. I'm not even gonna bother to put a stitch in that and I'm gonna pull that out. So just following this again, so this is where I've done the single crochet so it's on the bottom side and I'm gonna follow it to the other side and I'm gonna go in to the other side from the middle of the bag so that the knot appears on the outside. It's more of a characteristic of this. So my goal is, is then to get this knot to look very similar in size to this other one. Whether I can do it in one take, I don't know. So I'll figure it out. So I'm just gonna tie a knot. And I'm gonna pull it down on it. I'm just gonna straighten up my knot. So I'm looking at it here. It's pretty close. It's pretty close, there you go. So then I can pull it back. And therefore this handle is completely done. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna do the other side off camera and when we come back, we'll just do a quick uh, just a review of this bag and then you're good to go. So make sure on the other side of the bag, you keep the single crochet that joins them, uh, the two on the inside and making sure that when you put it up like this is that there's no weird twists within the handle.